Being able to create private pages is a big part of many applications and websites. There are lots of different ways to achieve this. But what I want to do is show you the foundation for all my applications, which I think is one of the fastest and most robust ways to get started. As with all my videos from now on, a GitHub link to the finished application is in the description. The font size should be large enough for you to see, which helps, and I'll not be typing along and building this from scratch. Instead, because all of the code is available for you to download, I'll be talking through what it's doing and why. Any questions you have, leave them in the comments section, and I'll aim to reply to everyone as quickly as I can. Anyway, let's get into it. So let's start with the end product and work backwards, and I'll go as slow as I can to try and explain everything that's happening. So here we have a basic website or application with a header, some menu options, and then outputting a component based on the current route. So we have home and about, which switches between the home and about components, and then the login page, which if we enter a username and password and hit login, will give us access to some private routes or non-public routes. And we have one route called private, which shows a member's area component. And then we have an account component, which was previously hidden. And that's showing the current username of the person logged in. We then also have a logout button, which if we click, de-authenticates the user and only allows them to access these pages. If, for example, we directly try and access the account page, we're just shown nothing because the, the user is not authenticated. So let's have a look at the code behind and walk through exactly what's happening. So the first thing to note is the app.js file is importing React Router and also this auth wrapper, which I've created and we'll walk through that shortly. And it's simply outputting browser router to give the child components access to React Router. And then everything is being controlled by our auth wrapper, which is what decides what the person on the application or website can and cannot see. So if we go into the auth folder and have a look at this auth wrapper, you'll see that we're importing create context, use context and use state. We're importing the header components and we're also importing the menu and routes, which we'll step through next. Um, we're creating our own context, which if you don't know about the use context hook, um, I suggest you go and check out one of my other videos when I go into detail about the use context hook or just Google it. It's really, really useful and saves you having to pass stateful items down through your child components. We then export auth data, which is um, a constant of the context that we've created. And then our main wrapper has a stateful item of user and step set user, which by default is an empty string for the name of the user and is authenticated false. Again, this is a really basic version of private routes and authentication. Um, you would normally store a lot more information on the user in here. We have a login function, which takes the username and password and decides whether the user has entered the correct password. And normally you would make an API call to your backend, which would decide whether the username's a match and the password's a match, but we're just hard coding um, and returning a new promise that if the password entered is equal to password, then update the user in the state with the username that was entered and is authenticated true, and we're resolving success. If the password entered is not password, then we're rejecting it with an error message of incorrect password. Next is the logout function, which is simply setting the is authenticated to false, so we're, we're logging the user out and they can no longer access the private routes. And the auth wrapper is then returning our auth context. So it's making available the user item in the state, the login function and the logout function available to the child components. And then we're simply rendering the header, the menu and the routes 
and the route shown will depend on the path uh, in the browser. Um, so let's have a quick look at this header menu and routes components. We go into components and then structure. The header is a very simple um, component, just outputting some HTML. The navigation is exporting an array of objects. Um, so instead of defining my paths directly in a paths file or in the output, I'm dynamically creating them and I'll cover that next, but I'm dynamically creating them depending on whatever's put in this object. Um, the reason I do that is because it's much simpler especially considering that we're using this navigation object to run the menu and the available routes to the user to just have to define them once. So we've got the home path, which is true for the menu and is false for private. Um, so we're saying it can always be shown in the menu and it's not a private route, i.e. it's public. The same with the about path. So we're defining the path, the name for the menu, the element that will be shown once React Router matches that path, is menu true, is private false. We then have the login path, which you'll notice is, is menu false. And that's because we want to hard code whether login should be shown or not, depending on whether the user is authenticated. But again, it's a public route, so is private false. And then we have our two private routes which are private and account. So yes, they can show in the menu, depending on whether the user is authenticated, obviously, and is private true. So these routes will never render unless the user is authenticated. We'll just quickly walk you through the pages, which are just simple components. So about account, which is pulling in auth data from our auth wrapper um, and giving this component access to the user state in order to display the name. The home component, very basic. The login is outputting a form for the user to enter their username and password, updating the local state item here, form data, using the use reducer as opposed to um, use state. Um, again, if you're not sure about use reducer, um, I've got a video on that. If you want to subscribe to the channel and search for the use reducer hook, or alternatively just search Google, Fairly straightforward, but can save you a ton of time. And then we've got the do login once the button is clicked, um, which is here. And do login is literally just calling the login function from our auth wrapper. Again, that's being imported here. Passing through the username that was entered in the form and the password. And as long as there's no um, uh, rejection by that promise, then it will navigate to the forward slash account page if there is a rejection. And if you remember in our auth component, uh, our auth wrapper, if we don't match, we're rejecting with incorrect password, then we set error message as to whatever was, whatever error was passed back. So that's the login page. And then the private route is just a simple private members area. We then have the render navigation page, which is a little more complicated. So that's importing this array of objects from the navigation file. And it's doing a render route. So this is where we're dynamically creating the routes that are available to the user. Now, again, you could just output all of the routes in your um, auth wrapper, but if you did that, if the user wasn't authenticated and happened to know the URL forward slash account or forward slash private, they could then potentially get access to that route. So we're mapping through the navigation object or array of objects and saying, if it's private and the user is authenticated, then that's fine. We can give them access to that route. Else, as long as it's a public route, i.e. not a private route, then that's fine as well. We can output that route. So this render routes is what's deciding the paths and routes the user has access to, depending on whether they're authenticated or not, and whether the route has been defined as private or not. We then have a render menu component, which 
is making use of the user state item and the logout function that we defined in our wrapper. Um, and it's importing that from auth data. Um, this menu item is just defining what a menu item looks like. And then the real work is here. So again, we're mapping through the navigation items and we're saying if it's public, i.e. not private, and is menu, if you remember inside of our navigation item, we're defining whether something should be shown in the menu or not. So if it's public and it's meant to be in the menu, that's fine. It can be shown. Else, if the user is authenticated, i.e. if it's not public, if the user is authenticated and it's meant to be in the menu, that's fine. Show a menu item for that as well. And then if you remember in the navigation items, I said that we didn't want to have the login by default in the menu. What we've done here is to hard code. If the user is authenticated, then show them the logout button. And that simply calls the logout function that we're pulling through from our auth wrapper. Else, if the user is not authenticated, show them the login link. And so if we flick back to the application, hopefully that will make a bit more sense about what's going on. Um, if I enter password incorrectly, we'll get incorrect password. Um, if I enter it correctly, we'll be logged in and we then have access, access to these routes. Um, so adding new components to this app, because there's probably going to be lots of private components um, you want to give the user access to, all we would simply need to do, <clears throat> excuse me, is create a new component. Um, it may be um, uh, order history, for example, and then inside of the navigation object of arrays, um, array of objects, sorry, all we would need to do is add in a new object here, call it forward slash order history, name order history, pull through the element we've just created, decide whether it should be shown in the menu, probably true, and decide if it's private, true or false. And you can therefore very quickly add as many public and private routes as you like. The one other thing to mention that I've not covered here um, is that inside of the auth wrapper, you'll notice that we're deciding um, what to show the user based on whether they're authenticated or not. And that's being pulled from the state. If we were to hard refresh the page, um, if I do control R, you'll notice we're logged out, logged back in. That's fine. But a refresh again, we're logged out. Now, obviously a lot of the time the pages don't refresh because we're using React Router to navigate through the different routes and components. But users ultimately do refresh the pages, especially if they feel like something's taking too long or they're stuck. In which case, you would need to implement some kind of local storage um, inside of this app. Now, I would normally store things like a user key and um, a timestamp for when the session should expire to determine whether the user is logged in or not. And depending on things the user does throughout the app, I may refresh that timestamp so they don't automatically get kicked out. I'm not going to cover that in this tutorial, but if you'd like to see an implementation of that, please let me know in the comments. And if there's enough demand, I'll be sure to record a video. So that's it. A simple but effective way to manage authentication and private routes in React. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Again, a link to the GitHub repository is in the description. So go ahead and download that. And I'll see you in the next one.